<clears throat> what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video so this is the real housewives of salt lake city season four episode 10 uh we see that heather is planning a book event um it's not just a book signing it's an event she's gonna do a book talk and she's gonna usually have somebody introduce her and so we see her looking at the venue we find out later on that she invites Lisa to do the introduction and they're going to do a whole parody off of the whole away in a manger thing. It's very Heather like very I'm going to just tell y'all the truth. When it got to that part when she was having her book talk I fast forwarded through what Lisa did. I know she did away in a manger. I know the choir came out and I think she did some sort of a rap but I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. I ain't watch all that. Because I didn't want to hear Lisa sing. Nothing. But it was cute. It shows the progression of their friendship. And so I was here for that aspect of it. To see that they have moved forward in their friendship. Okay. So then we see Lisa meeting up with. Going over to. Um, um, Whitney's house. And Whitney is letting um, Lisa know that I was very irritated at how you and Monica acted at my party, okay? That was a work event. That was a very important event to me. And y'all acted a damn fool. And, of course, Lisa did what Lisa does best. She got defensive and she threw it off on Monica. Now, I'm just going to listen. Y'all ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. And, honestly, it's going to probably burn my tongue as I say it. But I'm kind of with Lisa on this one. I am kind of with Lisa on this one. And let me, stay with me for a minute. Let me explain to y'all what I mean by that. So, Lisa, who, yes, she has an issue with Monica, right? We know that she didn't really, she was feeling some kind of way about the comments Monica made about her money and da-da-da-da-da. But, she was defending her perception of what Monica did to Angie. Notice I said her perception don't get in my comments talking about, well, Monica did this and Lisa said that. I don't care. I'm talking about her perception. This is Lisa we talking about, okay? In Lisa's mind, she was defending Angie. In Lisa's mind, Monica spread the rumor about Meredith, even though, I mean, about Angie. Even though Meredith threatened to tell what she knew, Meredith ain't say nothing. It was actually Monica who said the rumor, right? So Lisa's thing is, I see you all buddy-buddy with the person that we both agree we don't really rock with. I don't know that y'all done had a conversation and y'all done met down to the bakery and broke bread and cleared the whole thing up. I don't know nothing about that. All I know is you told me you didn't rock with her. I told you I didn't rock with her and we was going to be together on that. And I look up and now you over there buddy-buddy with her and I feel some kind of way about that. I understand that perspective of it. Even at the party... Monica kept going. Now, could Lisa have disengaged? Absolutely. But Monica really was the antagonist in that situation down to the sound bath. Now, that's my opinion. I know y'all gonna disagree with me, and that's okay. I love you anyway, and I hope you love me too. Now, Whitney and Lisa are getting into like a heated exchange, and Lisa is doing a lot of cussing, right? Now, Whitney's kids are there, and Whitney was like, Lisa, Lisa... I don't really talk, she said, I, you know, out in the streets, I talk like that. But at home, I don't really talk like that in front of my kids. We don't use that kind of language in my house. Lisa said, okay, fine, I got it, I got it. And Whitney kept going. It's, it's almost like she didn't hear that Lisa said, okay. She's like, I'm just saying, I don't talk like that, Lisa. I mean, we don't do that here, Lisa. I mean, we don't, you know, my kids are afraid. My kids are scared. You keep, you, and Lisa was like, girl, okay. Now, I know what somebody going to say. Well, maybe it was the editing. Maybe Lisa kept doing it and she wouldn't stop. I don't know. But all I know was, Whitney, you said it. Lisa said, okay, move on. But it was like she just had to keep, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we don't talk like that. We don't talk like that. That's not how we talk around here. That's not what we do around here. We don't talk around here. Girl, she got it. Y'all don't cuss in front of y'all churn. We got the point. Okay. Child, then we have Mary and Lisa. Listen. I mean, Heather. Listen. We've all seen Mary's eclectic situation down to her house. I do like that Tiffany Blue. 
I don't know if I paint my kitchen Tiffany blue, but I do like the Tiffany blue. And if you did it like a whole breakfast at Tiffany's theme with your kitchen, I think that would be cute. Um, not really sure how I feel about those chairs, but we've talked about those chairs before. So Heather was like, wow, you know, it's the first time I've been invited to Mary's house. Okay, that's a whole situation. So somehow Mary decided that she wanted to address some things with Lisa. You know, people crack me up when they only remember what somebody said about them. They don't remember what they said about that person. So Lisa, I keep saying Lisa, Heather, Heather, Heather. So Heather reminds Mary, well, you know, you said some, you know, you, you're upset about what I said in my book, which I really don't feel like it was that bad. She said that she was aloof and quirky and whatever, whatever. Like, girl, she ain't lying on you. What Heather said, I ain't read the book either, Heather, sorry. But what Heather said is true. Period. So she said, well, you said that I was inbred. Did, do you think I look inbred? Baby Mary said, yeah. Girl, how you gonna sit here and want me to apologize about something I said about you and you is you are doubling down on calling me an inbred? Like, girl, what? And then Mary sort of came back and was like, okay, look, I was upset. You know, I was kind of in my feelings when I made those comments. I, I didn't mean them. I'm sorry. But girl, you doubled down on calling me an inbred before you took it away, you added to it. You see what I'm saying? Child, is Mary doing what Mary does, child? It is Mary doing what Mary does. Okay. So, the two of them are cool, though. They're cool. So, we see Meredith and Seth. They're filming their podcast. I think it's called Hanging On By A Stream. They said, she said, because, you know, it's hard to get Seth together so that, so when I do have him home and I do have his attention, we try to film two or three episodes so that, we can, you know, have some in the bag in case he's not home, he's out of town or whatever, which I think is pretty smart. I've actually done that myself before. So I think that's pretty smart. So they end up having this conversation, which I thought was a really good conversation, where I feel like they really broke some barriers in understanding their marriage. We found out that they had a prenup. I mean, they have a postnup. Excuse me. They didn't have a prenup. They have a postnup. But the postnup isn't about money. That's what they did. It's about custody. Because she said, look, my husband moved me from Chicago to Utah, where the laws are not very favorable for women as it relates to divorce and custody. And I honestly felt like our marriage was at a place where it was broken beyond repair. I really thought at any moment you were going to leave me. Like, I, that was my fear. And then my fear was you have moved me to a state where I don't have the same rights that I had in Chicago and I needed to protect myself and my family, my kids. So the post nup was all about protecting my rights as a parent in the case of a divorce, which I felt was imminent. And I was like, I feel that. Like, I feel that, Meredith, right? So then Seth actually opened up and said, look, I was raised that you take care of your family. He said, I was raised that, you know, he said, my only goal was getting a job and then getting a better job and then getting a better job so that I could provide for my family and I could be able to take my take care of my family in a, a, a style that I wanted to be able to take care of my family. He said, but I was raised in a, a household where that is what the man did and the women did everything else. He said, so yeah, my job I felt like was to bring home the bacon he said, I didn't care about homework. I didn't care about the, helping the kids with the discipline. I didn't care about making sure that the kids, you know, clean their room or or teaching my son how to ride a bike. Like, I, I didn't have, that was not on my purview. He said, and for that, I apologize. Baby, they was both crying. They were holding, like, I was feeling it. I said, this is the most we have gotten out of Meredith and Seth since season one, Right? Child, why Meredith wasn't recording? All that went to waste because that was good. And if I were in a relationship and I were in the market looking for podcasts about relationships and people who've been through some rocky times in their marriage, baby, that right there, that episode, that would have been everything. Child, Meredith wasn't even recording. Now, Meredith, listen, I ain't even going to give you a hard time. I have done it. I, 
I have literally been recording and had never hit the button. And it always seems like that is the best take. Or something happens. And it always seems like that is the best version of whatever it is you're trying to record. Anyway, let's hop on over to Monica's house. Now, Monica is with her kids. They're getting ready. They're helping make signs for the prom or something. I don't think it's a prom proposal. I think it's like when they're going to have signs and stuff when her daughter gets picked up for the prom. And her mama rolled up in that Range Rover. Now, I, I did a whole conversation about this on my live earlier. But, you know, her mama rolled up in this Range Rover that she uses as a, a pawn with her and Monica. Monica said whenever her mother get mad at her, she takes that car back. The car's in her mother's name because her credit is jacked up. And she said, you know, she leaves me stranded with my kids and she doesn't care, right? So the mother shows up. She said, this is a peace offering. And she gives Monica the key back. Monica was like, girl, you just giving me back what's mine. Like, this is my car. I paid a car note. You take it when you get mad at me. She said, I was just trying to get your attention. I was just trying to get you to understand. See, don't play games with me and my kids. Now, Monica, do I think you needed a Range Rover? Girl, no. Okay, you could have got a cheaper car. You know, you're trying to rebuild your credit. You could always trade it in in a year or two, whatever, whatever. But that's not what we're here for. Mama, you are using that car as a, as a tool, as a punishment, as a, as a pawn um, in this game that you and Monica are playing with each other. She tells Monica, I think we should go to therapy. Monica said, girl, we done been there and done that. She said, I know, but, you know, I just feel like we need to keep trying. We need to, she said, we have years and she said we have generations of dysfunction and it's not going to be fixed overnight and we've got to figure out and she said let it be us man i'm gonna be honest with you monica wants it to be real like monica wants her mother to mean these things but in the back of her mind i think she just doesn't believe her mother she doesn't trust it and she doesn't believe her mother and i'll be honest with you girl i don't believe your mother either I think all of this is performative for the cameras. I think your mother is dysfunctional, and I think your relationship has been dysfunctional no, for a very long time. Now, at the end of the day, the reality of the situation is can it be fixed? I mean, I do think with therapy and with some sincere conversations, revelations, people being honest and open and be people willing to change, yeah, I think it can. Do I think the two of them are going to fix it? I won't put no money on that. Now, listen, God is still in the blessing business, but I wouldn't put no money on it, okay? So, Monica make her mama walk. <laughs> Monica took them car keys and went back in the house and said, thank you. Her mama was like, how am I going to get home? Monica was like, you can walk. Baby, I ain't mad at you, Monica. Your mama took that car and left you and your kids straight. I ain't mad at you for making your mama walk at all. So, we get down to um, Heather's event. And like I said, I told you, I didn't already fast-forwarded through Lisa coming through, singing away in the major and the, the choir. And I, I don't know what all happened. Um, I know that Heather read an excerpt from her book talking about, you know, um, you know, leaving the church and her feelings about leaving the Mormon church. And, um, you know, she did her book signing and it was cool. Now, Monica and... Lisa pretty much ignored each other for the majority of this event, right? Um, Angie tried to confront Meredith about Meredith threatening to tell these rumors. And Meredith was like, girl, I'm sorry. I don't know what else you want from me. She said, well, you threatened to ruin my life. Here go Meredith. But I didn't. I'm sorry I threatened to. And I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of with Meredith at this point. And then Meredith, and then Meredith disengaged and left. I ain't mad at you, because, man, if you ain't never say nothing, now you threaten to say something. But first of all, she was drunk, y'all. Can we give Meredith a little bit because she was drunk? Meredith was drunk when she threatened to do that, okay? And then she didn't do it, okay? But neither here nor there, child. You know, I'm sure Andy going to press, press her at the reunion about what were you going to say, who was it about, what were you going to say. So I'm sure we're going to find out one way or the other. Um, Heather and Lisa end up having a really good conversation where Heather explains why, you know, she wanted to be a part of the whole mission situation, not because she was going to try to talk Jack out of it, but because she does have a perspective. Now, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you part of Heather's problem. Um, I think a lot of Heather problem, Heather's problem is coming to terms with the fact that the Mormon church is not for her. I ain't about to sit here and say nothing bad about the Mormon church because 
That ain't my that ain't my experience. But she on a level resents Lisa because Lisa can practice the Mormon faith the way she wants to. It's sort of like somebody that's a devout Catholic and somebody that goes to mass and does and, and picks and chooses the parts of Catholicism they want to adhere to. Heather was all in because that's the way Heather was raised. Heather was a virgin. Heather, you know, um, didn't party according to her. She didn't do all these things. She wore the garment. She, she did all the things that she was told to do to be a good Mormon. And she looks at Lisa and she's like, well, you're drinking and you still get to go into, go, you know, go to, I don't know what the right term is. So I don't want to be disrespectful, but let's say church. I know there's a part of the temple you can't go into unless you're worthy. And Lisa was like, girl, I don't care about going in that part of the temple. Like, I, you know, I'm going to wear my strapless dress to church and I'll stay on this side of the church. I don't need to go to that side of the church. Heather wanted to be on that side of the church. So Heather wore the garments, right? And I think there's a part of Heather that resents that Lisa is so comfortable in that space of saying, this is what I'm going to do. And Heather, and I mean, and Lisa even said, girl, look, I wasn't raised here in Utah, okay? I am an implant. So I practice the Mormon faith the way I chose to practice it in my upbringing because I ain't live here. I didn't grow up here. And now that I'm here, ain't nobody going to make me do it different. Like, I'm good. But I think they were able to have a really good conversation about that. And then um, Heather decides she wants to write another book. She talked to her daughters about it and was like, listen, I know you guys were bullied and harassed with the first book. Are you cool with me writing the second book? And again, I like what her daughter said. Her daughter said, listen, if this book is really about your experience and, and your process of dealing with what you went through, yes. If this is going to be about getting back at the church or be like a gripe session, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not cool with that. So I was like, you better tell it. I was here for that, right? So then we have Angie and Meredith meeting up, right? And I mean, damn, Angie and Lisa. Lisa, y'all. And basically, they're just having the conversation about, Lisa was like, girl, I need to understand what happened. Like, what, what, what went on? Because I'm out here defending you. I have your back. I'm trying to tell the people, you know, that, that, that Monica lied on you and Meredith shouldn't be telling your business. And you out here, you know, hanging with the enemy. Like, you were out here lollygagging with Monica, and I'm out here defending you against Monica. And that's when Heather let her know, well, me and her talked, and we cleared the air, you know. And she was like, well, girl, you could have just told me. She said, well, sometimes you're just so hard to talk to, and sometimes I just don't feel like I can. She was like, girl, all you had to do was tell me, okay? I would have acted accordingly. You didn't have to, girl, just tell me what we doing. What is the plan? Now, we have been around Lisa long enough to know it ain't that easy. However, comma, like I said at the beginning of my video, I did somewhat understand where Lisa was coming from, that she was out here windmilling for Angie, and Angie was sleeping with the enemy, okay? Anyway, that's the episode. Let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to y'all later.